Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I want to take you back 159 years ago to Evansville, Indiana. If you were a resident of that city and you received your local newspaper, the Daily Journal, you would have read a remarkable story about a favorite son, headlined an old soldier. It's the man pictured here, John Hicks. Let me read this story to you. It tells you the whole thing, everything you want to know. An old soldier. We had the pleasure yesterday of a visit from a genuine old veteran, a soldier of three wars, a man whose example and patriotism should shame the peaceniks and the thousands of stout, able-bodied stay-at-homes who are determined that the war shall be prosecuted and the rebellion put down if it takes the last male relative themselves and their wives possess. One well acquainted with the history of this brave old soldier says, John Hicks is one of the most remarkable men of our day. A soldier of three wars, he was still in the field at the age of 82, was born at Flemington, New Jersey, raised in Easton, Pennsylvania, and worked at his trade as a shoemaker in Reading. For the past 20 years, he has lived in Indiana. He went into the army in the War of 1812, was again a soldier in 1832 in the Black Hawk War, and in 1860, being then over 80, he volunteered for three years in the present war and was enrolled in the 58th Indiana. He was at the Battle of Shiloh and had a son over 60 years of age killed there. He has lately been discharged as somewhat disabled. His papers prove these facts. He stands firm and erect, has perfect use of his sight, speech, and hearing, uses no cane, and hardly cares to sit down. Such vigor is wonderful. Has he lived in the fear of God with temperate habits and hardworking hands? In his manners, modesty and self-respect are combined. He is intelligent and pleasant. Such a man is to be honored, and we owe him something besides. A few persons who chanced to meet him in the Museum of the Mint, the local place, took an interest in him and procured his portrait, which is sold solely for his benefit. So this is a description of John Hicks of the 58th Indiana Infantry in 1864, in June of 1864. There's actually another newspaper article from the same newspaper, the Daily Journal, two years early from July of 1862. And I want to read this article to you, too. It picks up some of the same storyline that you just heard me read, but gives a bit more detail. It also references Newburgh, Indiana, which is a raid that took place on July 18, 1862. It's notable for the first Confederate raid on a northern town which the, in which the northern town was captured. So let me read this story to you. It's short. And this one is called An Old Veteran. Quote, We received a call yesterday from Mr. John Hicks, a private in Company D, 58th Indiana Regiment, who has been home on a short furlough. Mr. Hicks is over 81 years of age, a resident of Princeton, and a shoemaker by trade. He was in the War of 1812 and in the celebrated Black Hawk War. On the breaking out of the rebellion, he promptly enlisted and has discharged all the duties of a soldier with fidelity and efficiency and has won the confidence of his officers. He happened to be in our city when new when he knew of the raid of Newburgh, pardon me, he happened to be in our city when news of the raid on Newburgh reached us. He immediately took a rifle, joined himself to one of our companies, and went up the river on the Eugene. That's a vessel. It is not time our young men were rallying as one man in defense of their flag when they see it upheld by an old man, 81 years old, a very grandfather. 
So that's the other story of John Hicks. What a character. Now, for those of you who are students of the Civil War, when you think of an older man who served somehow, some way in the, in the Union Army, the name John Burns probably comes to mind of Gettysburg fame. Well, John Burns, you might want to step inside because here's John Hicks. Anyway, take care. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next